Nothing is going to be perfect. Nothing. The only thing that's perfect is this fucking beard, dude. That's it. That That's it. That's the only flawless thing in existence right now is this fucking beard, okay? So if it's not this beard, then it's not perfect, okay? Let's watch this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes. And in this video, I'm going to Yo. show you how to break out of bounds before the Outpost Rush PvP battle begins so you can start already on the battlefield. Premiered 45 minutes ago. Yo, when does the PvP start? Is it more than 45 minutes? And then how to complete town <laughs> project gathering quests without spending the items, effectively resulting in unlimited a, experience. Wait, he's on a slander campaign. I don't think so. He's just pointing out things that are wrong with the game, right? I feel like my Gunbreaker video, it has a lot in common with his videos on New World and territory experience gain without losing any of your own resources. But before we begin, I need to explain a few important things. Recently, I've made a few videos on New World, and I've yeah. made some mistakes. I'd like to address the incorrect things I've said. Then I'd like to address the idea that I am anti-New World, that I somehow hate the game. Hold on, what was that tweet? I was wrong, and that is good. It means the client is safer than we thought. Also means Amazon are communicating with players, which is a great thing to do. Then I'd like to address the idea that I am anti-New World, that I somehow hate the game or hate the people enjoying the game, because that is simply not true. See, I said the same thing. Nowadays, you cannot give anything criticism. You cannot say anything bad about anything. And you know why? Because if you do, that means that you hate it with all of your heart. That's what that means. Because people think that I actually hate Gunbreaker. I don't. I have a problem with things about Gunbreaker. People think I hate Dark Knight, but you know what? They're not listening, okay? They're not using their ears. They're not using their mind. They're not using their eyes. They're not processing information. That is how stupid people are. My methods may be slightly more public and destructive than you feel is necessary, but if you'd let me, I'd like to explain why I do things the way I do. Let's start with the most- See, he's such a nice guy. See, me, I don't give a shit. Whenever people comment something stupid on my fucking YouTube video, you know what I do? I say, you're a fucking idiot, and then I ban him, because I'm not wasting my fucking goddamn time. So you better be lucky that people like Josh Hayes are in the fucking world to entertain your fucking dumbass, man. The fundamental aspect of all of my content. If you are a gamer on any level of video game at all, I am not your enemy. I do yeah. not think you are wrong for enjoying New World. And I- the the fact that he has to explain this is really, really depressing. But free speech, Strummer, that's fine. Just don't take your dumb speech on my fucking YouTube videos or my stream because I'm going to ban you. You definitely can say whatever the fuck you want, but the consequences of that will, like, vary. The fact that I have to explain his explanation is also depressing. My stance on it is I have completely given up on those people. I completely give up. I'm just not going to entertain those people anymore. Like, if someone watches, like, one of my videos, like, we'll just take my Gunbreaker video, for example, and they're like, wow, you know, all he does is complain about Gunbreaker. He must hate Gunbreaker. It's like, you're not listening, so get the fuck out. Like, I'm not even going to waste my time. That's my mentality. I do not think the fun or enjoyment you have found in the game is any less valid because it has flaws and bugs in it. It is incredibly important to understand this is not me versus you. It is not us versus them or player versus non-player. This is not tribal warfare. What it is, is me believing you deserve better games and better treatment from gaming companies. The priority of my videos is always the player, being as direct with you as I can and sharing with you the good and the bad of the game in question. I have praised games I've personally dislike and slated games I subjectively love. My priority in my videos is you, the player, regardless of how I feel. Many people counter that point by saying I have never praised New World. This is categorically wrong. I have repeatedly said the graphical design is top notch and the sound design is probably the best in any MMORPG currently out there. Exploring the wilderness and seeing a tree be felled in the distance and hearing the crash of the timber while that the good. light rays filter through the branches is absolutely superb. If you value exploration, then New World is one of the best games for that. I also enjoy the crafting system and I'm a huge fan of how at higher levels you can craft some of the best equipment in the game. I feel so people completely forgot all the positive things he said about the game, right? And people don't like to hear bad things about their favorite game. And you know what, man? Look, nothing is going to be perfect. Nothing. The only thing that's perfect is this fucking beard, dude. That's it. 
That that's it. That's the only flawless thing in existence right now is this fucking beard, okay? So if it's not this beard, then it's not perfect, okay? All right? So there we go. You can criticize something and still love it. I do it to Final Fantasy all the time. The number of resources needed needs balancing, but in general, the crafting system is solid. Yo, if, what the fuck? <laughs> I see many people commenting, well, I'm having fun, and that's great, but your having fun doesn't negate the effects the flaws of the game are having on the rest of the player base. Mm -hmm. I also see many people saying, it's a new MMO, there are bound to be flaws. I find this type of thinking honestly quite sad, especially when I see people commenting things such as, I've been playing MMOs for 20 years and this is to be expected. I Okay, for everyone that thinks that when a new game comes out, it's okay for it to have bugs, no, it's not okay. That is you being trained. You're a sheep. Do new games have bugs? Yes. Is it okay? No. Just because they do doesn't mean that it's okay. Especially with nowadays, the way they design games now, it's like you only get half the game because the rest of the game, they feed you in DLCs. So when a new game comes out, it is still not okay for it to be fucked up. They've trained you to expect that now. So get that out of your fucking head. I believe this is a sad state to be in. To simply expect a product to release in a poor state and to excuse the poor state with that's how it always is, is not acceptable to me. I, as a gamer, believe you deserve I gotta meet this guy. I feel like me and him, we have the same brain, but the polar opposite body. He has no beard, a lot of hair. I got no hair, a lot of beard. Better, and no matter how many poor MMO launches I am forced to live through, I will not allow launching in an incomplete state to become normalized. Just because every game before has done it does not excuse you doing it now. There have been people on the New World forums and the subreddit, even some coming into my live Twitch stream, who believe I want the game to fail. Nothing hmm. could be further from the truth. I want New World to succeed so I and my friends can play it. And I Cough, haze, cough. Hey, I'm, I'm happy it's not client side. Means there's going to be a lot less stuff possible to do. The information we had and all the examples made it look extremely client side. I can now update and say I was wrong, which I'm happy to be. I want this game to be good too. A lot of people who aren't familiar with my content assume I hate this game. Quite the opposite. I love the idea. I think it could be fantastic, but avoiding the hard question and, re and hard reality of the fixes isn't going to help. I want MMOs to thrive and do well. I'm on the player side here. We all win when the game we all love work. See these early day troubles as a sign of poor quality control and poor beta testing that needs to be sorted out sooner rather than later. Imagine if a people that think that way, they have no prior knowledge to anything that the content creator has said. All they have heard or seen was either one post or one clip probably taken out of context and they built up this idea in their head that that person absolutely hates whatever the fuck it is they're talking about. So basically what I'm trying to say is, is people will see a very short, small sample size of one thing that a person will say and that completely defines them as a person because no one thinks about it. No one thinks about, hey, you know what? Maybe I should really look at more than five seconds of what this person is talking about before I finalize my decision on if he's an asshole or not but no one ever thinks about that type of shit okay the new restaurant opened and in the first month half the customers got food poisoning you wouldn't say it's only been a month let the food poisoning issue work itself out you wouldn't say well i ate there and i was fine this would not negate the other people getting sick. <laughs> if you went to this restaurant in the opening week and found some glass in your food, you wouldn't simply hand wave it away and say, well, it's only the first week. Bound to be a few jars of glass in some meals. We hold many industries to exceptionally high standards. The fact we don't hold the gaming industry to an equally high standard is exactly why the gaming industry feels so comfortable serving you a subpar product. Yeah, exactly. The reason why the gaming industry feeds you that nonsense is because it's always been that way right whenever a game comes out oh sorry sorry there's bugs it's new okay well before you release the game didn't you test anything going back again to my gunbreaker shit it obviously wasn't tested it's very obvious that it wasn't tested the whole continuation thing that's one thing the dps rotation of the job was not tested and it's obvious it just wasn't tested that's the it's the principle of the matter it's the same thing here the fucking shit just wasn't tested test harder developers test harder you may accept less 
I will not. When reporting on the bugs and the glitches, one of the most common replies I see from fans and defenders of the game is, just have patience, they will fix it. I admire your optimism, but having worked in many industries, allow me to offer an alternative viewpoint. A company makes decisions based on profits. If it is financially viable, it will do it. If a bug or a glitch exists in a game, it will only be patched when patching it makes more financial sense than simply leaving it there. Fixing yeah. things takes time and labor. Both of these cost money. If a bug is determined to cost the company X amount of cash per year, and this is an acceptable loss, they simply won't fix it. Yeah. If fixing it would cost 100x, then the company can survive for 100 years without fixing the bug. That is the best financial choice. It is simply not a good business decision to fix. When I, along with other YouTube... See, here is one thing that people forget about, especially Final Fantasy XIV players. Yeah, especially you guys. We forget that Square Enix is a company. Ooh, yeah, we kind of forget that, like, all the fucking time. We think Square Enix is our friend. We think that we could just call up Square Enix. Hey, what up, Yoshi? Yo, what's up, dogs? Go, dude. No, that doesn't happen. Okay, you can't do that. That doesn't happen. You do that, and on the other end of this phone, you're going to hear, a word, a word. That's what you're going to hear. The sirens are going to be going off, and you're going to get arrested for stalking. Square Enix is not your friend. They are a company. They are a business. They don't give a shit about you. They want your money. Content creators make videos exposing these glitches. Many of you become angry, stating we are making it worse, sharing the trick, and more people will start doing it, which will affect more people in the game. Good. People will leave. Make them fix it. Fuck them. Join because it becomes common knowledge. This is true, and this in turn forces the company to fix the glitch. Yes. Because now Fuck fixing it is more financially viable yes. than leaving it. The yes. sausage glitch using HTML markup in the chat box was in the game for months after the video from Callum Upton and myself showing it and the A data equals one mouse over crash bug. They have now removed the ability to write A tags in the chat box, effectively fixing it. If these people that are shitting on this guy, they should be thanking him and thanking all the people that found those bugs. If they wouldn't have brought it to the public's attention, do you really think Amazon would have fixed it? I don't. No fucking way, man. No fucking way. You know why they fixed it? Because PR disasters are literally that. It's a fucking nightmare. No one wants bad PR. Amazon doesn't want to be known as the company with the shitty MMO that you can post sausages and cheat, okay? If our videos change the impact of a glitch from, oh, we'll ignore it, it's only affecting a few players and doesn't affect sales, to we should fix this now, it's affecting some players, then I see it as a net gain for the players of the game over the long term the game becomes healthier. I will never directly attack or call out staff members or suggest anyone harass the staff of Amazon Games in any way. That's not acceptable. But I will show what the game they have made can do and the faults within. The players deserve to know. If you enjoy New World, that's great. But being blind to the flaws isn't a viable improvement tactic. And waiting for the company to fix them in their own time means they will always prioritize what loses the money over what doesn't. Which means you will always have a smooth smoothly working cash shop and a very janky game. If everyone simply sat and patiently waited without losing the company any money, nothing would ever get done. Yeah. Where would the motivation to do anything be? I know many- Because if there's no reason to fix it, like let's say something's in the game, right? But it's not drawing attention and players aren't like exploiting it or anything. They're not gonna just go in there and fix it because of their moral compass. I can't sleep at night because someone can post a sausage in the fucking chat box. You know, I'm having dreams and, and nightmares of sausages. Every time I think about it, I just see a sausage in the chat. You know, this is driving me crazy. That doesn't happen. People do not like confrontation, but in many cases, it is required for results to happen. This is the equivalent of me politely but firmly asking to speak to the manager and explaining the service I, along with hundreds of thousands of other people, have received isn't acceptable. And I will not leave until you've fixed it, and until you do fix it, I yeah. will show everyone what you are providing. Before I show you the insanely simple experience bug, I'd like to address one major point. I forgot what uh, the bug is, dude, because he's made so many points. What's the bug? I guess we'll find out. I was wrong. 
In a previous video, I stated the New World client was client-side authoritative. I stated this because the evidence we had led us to believe this was the case. The slow falling effect, the rolling and moving the window at the exact roll frame to cause immunity. These were moments of manipulation through the client that the server should have overridden, but didn't. Amazon has since released a statement explaining how their server architecture works, stating it's a bit more complex than that. Decisions are made server-side, but the client has limited authority to delay certain messages. And here's, here's the thing, man. It doesn't matter if he was wrong about it being client side or fucking server side. The fact was you could do what you could do. Obviously, if it was client side, it would be worse, but it was pretty fucking goddamn bad in its current state. Like I'm not simping for him right now. He was wrong about something, he admitted it. But my point is that people that are like on copium, they're gonna be like, I told you he was wrong. And it's like, dude, it doesn't take away from the fact that you could still go invulnerable. You could still float in air. Even though he was wrong, he still brought it to attention. It brought attention and hopefully they get their shit together and the server waits for a reply from the client before processing, and they have made improvements in this area. So it's not actually completely one or the other. When this statement released, many people on the New World forums were cheering and couldn't wait to see me turn tail and hide for being wrong, but that's not what- Yup. It's because that's how people are. People love to fucking put, oh, this is versus that. And they love to put like a content creator versus a company or a company versus a company. They always like to see this drama and shit. And it's not about that. It's not about that what this channel is. Me being wrong is fine. It will happen occasionally whenever I fail to research or I trust wrong information. In this case, me being wrong is good for the players. This makes the client a lot safer than we first thought. My job isn't to say something and then defend it. The fact that people were like, yes, yes, he was wrong. I love my game. Dude, that's you being a sheep. You've been trained. Like, do you not see that? Are you kidding me? That's just how people are, dude. They get trained. You're trained when to go to work. You're trained when to take a shit. You're trained when to eat. You're trained when to sleep. I know because I used to fucking do that. And now they're training you how to have fun. So yes, it's a mind fuck. In spite of alternative evidence because of my ego, my job is to play games, enjoy games, and advocate for the players as best I can. I made a video using the best knowledge I had at the time. I called the client authoritative. Amazon released a statement explaining how it isn't. I was wrong. Hopefully this is the start of a more open dialogue between Amazon Games Studios and the players. If me being wrong causes conversation to happen and the players to receive more information, I consider it a fair price to pay. I yes. know many people who disliked me yeah. used this mistake as a gotcha moment, and they were then confused when I was thrilled to be wrong. This isn't about my ego. While no Here's another thing too, about some of the stuff that I say, the issues I have with Final Fantasy. All of this shit going into Endwalker is subject to change. This is a crazy concept, but when content creators say this type of shit, they want to be wrong. Believe it or not, it's actually good to be wrong because you learn from something. Same Gunbreaker rant. Hopefully, my long ass fucking rant in that video, maybe Square Enix will be like, oh, you know what? Fuck, you know, we didn't play test this for shit. Let's just add five seconds to No Mercy and make everything fine. If that happens, I am going to be a much happier person because then Gunbreaker will be playable. I want my initial analysis of the job to be wrong. Yes, that's what I want. I don't want to play that fucking garbage, okay? You might because you're on copium. You might, but I don't. No one likes being wrong and public mistakes are of course embarrassing. My loyalty is to the players, regardless of what- Nah, see, here's the thing. See, he's got a full head of thick hair, okay? Once you go bald like me, you don't really get embarrassed anymore. See? They think of me, and my credibility requires me to admit my failings and mistakes when they do happen. With that being said, my previous videos have highlighted bugs which Amazon Games Studios then immediately fixed, so let's see if we can keep that process going. If you want to take part in the Outpost Rush PvP minigame, you normally have to wait behind the gates and then run in when they open, but if you follow this extremely simple route of climbing onto the stairs and then up and around some boxes through the greenery and over the invisible wall, you can begin with your whole team already 
in the map and eliminate the travel time between the points and begin capturing all the points the instant the game starts. Let's it's go! It's bad level design and can be fixed with a single invisible wall around the edge. Until this is fixed, enjoy PvP being fundamentally unfair. And now the best bug I've found so far this week. Actually emailed to me by a viewer, so thank you for this. You can accept a project quest from the town board. Some of these quests require you to collect a certain number of- Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Design. Let's look at the PvP the thing again. In All right. The green street. See if we can keep that. All right. Let's look at the going. PvP if thing one more time. The it's so easy to do. He just fucking blazed through that. The outpost rush PvP minigame. You normally have to wait behind the gates and then run in when they open. But if you follow this extremely simple route of climbing right. onto the stairs and then up and around some boxes through the greenery and over the invisible wall, you can begin with your whole team already in the map and eliminate the travel time between the points and begin capturing all the points the instant the game starts. This is simply bad level design and can be fixed with a single invisible wall around the edge. Until this is fixed, enjoy PvP being fundamentally okay. unfair. Okay. And now the best bug I've found so far this week. Actually right. emailed to me by a viewer, okay. so thank you for this. You can accept a project quest from the town board. Some of these quests require you to collect a certain number of items and then hand them in. Completing project quests gains you coins, territory, standing experience, and general experience, but it uses up the collected items. Well, here's the trick. I have accepted a quest to gain 100 water. I go and get the water, and then, before handing it in, I do the following. Place all of the water I have into storage. Now, one interesting aspect of New World is you can sell items on the auction house directly from your storage. And you can hand in collection quests directly from your storage. And it's the combination of those two events that causes this bug. I am now going to go to the auction house and list all of my water for sale. The water is now both in my storage and listed on the auction house. Okay, so he goes, gets the water, puts it in his storage. You can list things on the auction house from your storage. Okay. I now need to go and hand in the collection quest. And the useful thing is, I do not need to go to the storage and withdraw the item to my inventory. I can just hand the collection quest in directly from the storage. So I return to the town project board and complete the quest. This takes the 100 water away and gives me the experience, territory standing, and coins. But now, if I go back to the auction house, I will see my sell request for the 100 water is still there. So if I cancel my sell request, it will refund all of the items and give them back to me. I have- Okay, so it draws from the storage, but it seems like the auction house, because you can place it on there, once you place it on the auction house, it's almost like a duplicate item is set on the auction house, and it gets rid of it in your storage, but then when you take it back, you get that duplicate almost. I've already handed in the 100 water to complete the quest, but when I cancel the auction request, I get 100 water back. I can do this again to prove it isn't a fluke, and I'll do it without cutting the video so you know I'm not editing anything. I will accept a quest needing five large salmon, then I will buy these from the auction house, use the storage trick, hand in the quest, and then get all of my salmon back. All right. The fact that he has to point out and say, I'm going to show you this unedited means that there are a lot of new world gamers on massive fucking copium. What a shitty game to white knight for. Like, what the fuck? It's just ridiculous to me. Let me ask you guys a question, okay? What we're watching now, is this more exciting gameplay than what you would normally do in New World? I feel like it is. I feel like seeing an exploit done with the market board and auction house is more exciting than actual gameplay. That's what I feel like. But I don't know, I've never played it so I could be wrong. Because I've watched some New World streams and I've never been this excited to watch someone do something in New World before.
simple as that. You can now go to every town and do every project collection quest without losing any of your resources, and this is repeatable. For some reason, however, it doesn't work with potions. I have said many positive things about New World. My big problem is all the positives in the game will not hold players if the negatives remain so plentiful. We have been telling Amazon about the issues since beta and they haven't listened. They have released the game to you with all these flaws because they think this is what you will roll over. He said that these issues have been in since beta. Let me tell you guys something about beta. Betas are not really betas. Betas nowadays are, this is what the game is going to look like when it's released. Because whenever a game is released, it's actually in beta. So whenever you get a chance to play a beta, 99.9% .9 of the beta is what's going to be released. They just want to make sure that nothing is like game breaking. Now, okay, obviously New World really fucked that part up. They really fucked that part up. But for the most cases, you actually play the beta on release. You don't play a different version. ...and accept. You have been telling me that you've reported these bugs on the forums and they didn't listen to you. You put them on Reddit and the Reddit mods took them down because that's what Reddit mods do. People yeah. say to me, if you know so much, why don't you make a better MMO? I see this line of thinking as slightly flawed. I cannot build a plane, but I know the engine shouldn't be on fire or hanging off the wing. I cannot build a skyscraper, but I know they're not meant to lean over too much or be made of Play-Doh. I cannot create an MMORPG from the ground up, but I can actually do a small part of your request. Quest. I can help make a better one. I choose New World, and I choose to help make it better by making the players' voices heard and the developers motivated to fix things, because then the executives will- Has anybody ever thought about this? Maybe New World is supposed to have all these bugs. It is a new world. Maybe the devs want you to cheat because it's easier. And games nowadays are just getting easier. So maybe New World is doing exactly what it was meant to do. I'm just saying, man. ...will eventually realize giving the games division money to fix their game is a financially viable choice. Some people have excused the bugs by simply saying, well, they don't affect me, why don't you just play the game casually and ignore them? This isn't acceptable, and it's an incredibly selfish way to be. The Outpost Rush PvP bug doesn't affect me because I am not a PvP player. Just because this content is not aimed at me does not mean PvP players don't deserve a fair and balanced game mode. I don't play it, I probably never will, but I will still advocate for you being treated better. This isn't you against me, or us against them. It's all of us, as gamers, unified against unfinished games. Yeah. The day it becomes acceptable to release an unfinished game and expect all the players to just be okay with it while you slowly fix it over the next couple That's of years... That's how it is now. ...is the day we, as gamers, yeah. lose. Thank that... That's how it is, though. Unfortunately, I really think that that's how it is because every game that's released seems like it comes out in beta. There was one tweet I thought was so fucking awesome, man. And it was from uh, Santa Monica Studios about God of War Ragnarok. When they had to delay it, right? Obviously, because COVID and, and other issues like that. They released a tweet. I don't remember exactly what the tweet said, but in the tweet, it says, it will be done when it's done. And I read that as, hey, everybody, shut Shut the fuck up. We're gonna finish this shit. We don't give a fuck if you're mad or not. It's gonna be done when it's done. So shut the fuck up. I have so much respect for that. That is awesome. Thank you for watching. Thank you again to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and the second channel Josh Strife Plays, where I replay classic games voted on by you. And as always, have a great day. Oh man, I bet it logged me out. Fuck! Fucking logged me out, dude.